What's going on guys? It is the Coaster Battleman here bringing you an awesome video. The top 10 underrated roller coasters I've ridden. I've ridden many roller coasters out there, but there are several coasters I consider underrated coasters that I've ridden due to not too many people saying, oh, this ride is so much fun. Like, they hate on the ride. Or, no one really talks about the ride and really the park that's in. So, yeah. Let's move on. Number 10 is Goliath at Six Flags Great America. I love Goliath. It's a very good RMC coaster. It may have a simple layout for an RMC compared to the others, but it's one of the best wooden roller coasters out there because this coaster isn't a standard RMC hybrid. It's an RMC topper track wooden coaster. It has some crazy bank turns, ejector air time, and floater air time. The inversions are some of the best RMC inversions out there. With that dive loop, that's one of the best inversions on any RMC. In the 180 degree stall, those are fun elements. This is just a fun ride that may be a little too short is probably why not why too many people overlook this coaster. But I think this is a very good coaster. And I've heard, oh, this coaster's only 10 seconds long. It's not even that great. The coasters that are only a f that are short rides like Goliath are still very fun rides. Number 9 is Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point. Now, until 2015, Magnum XL200 was one of the most beloved coasters due to its solid first drop and airtime. But until late 2015 and... With Coaster Studios' Magnum XL200 review, it turn, turn, didn't turn out all that great. Most people started to hate ma on Magnum that were coaster enthusiasts, but I actually really enjoy this coaster. The drop is actually pretty good. The airtime in the first half isn't the best. The bowtie helix is pretty good. My favorite part of this ride is the triangular air, airtime hills that give you some insane ejector airtime. It may be a little painful, but it's still worth riding. Number 8 is another coaster at Cedar Point, Blue Streak. This coaster is kind of overlooked and is just considered the classic wooden coaster. Oh, it's just the original coaster at Cedar Point. How can it be that good? Now, the first time I rode this coaster, I didn't really like this coaster that much. But the other time I rode it, I really liked Blue Streak. I really love Blue Streak's airtime and overall ride experience. And overall, Blue Streak's airtime is very strong and very fun. It's probably the reason why it's at number 8. Number 7 is Firehawk at Kings Island. To me, this is the most underrated flying coaster out there. A lot of people say that Nighthawk at Carowinds is rough, but it, some people have said it's been smooth or a decent ride. But this, this co flying coaster, Firehawk, is just the underdog of the three flying co Dutchmans. Everyone talks about Batwing and saying it's the best, and Nighthawk is the worst, but they often forget about Firehawk at King's Island. And to me, compared to the Superman Ultimate Flight clone that I rode at Six Flags Great America, Firehawk overall had the much stronger layout. I really like Firehawk's strong layout. Plus, peop not too many people, or for some people, some people do not like flying coasters, so that's probably why they would hate this ride. But if you think, oh, it's a Vekoma, it's not good, but Firehawk is actually one of the best Vekomas ever built. Very smooth ride. It may not be as smooth as probably Superman Ultimate Flight, but it's still pretty smooth. Number six is another coaster at Kings Island Vortex. Now, this coaster, what what a fun ride this was. I really like Vortex. It's my favorite aerodynamics custom looping coaster. It's a pretty large custom looper with six inversions. The two vertical loops are lots of fun. The double corkscrew on this ride is very fun. Definitely my favorite double corkscrew on any aero looper. The bat wing was fun. I really like that bat wing element on Vortex. This was just a fun coaster for me, and definitely one of my favorite coasters at Kings Island. I liked it better than the Racer, and 
a few other coasters that you could consider better than this one, like Invertigo, Flight of Fear, Racer even. But I just love this coaster. It's just a fun ride to me. It's one of those pure fun coasters that is just fun to ride. But I've heard that some people say that this coaster is very rough, but I found a way to enjoy it. So that's why it's at number six. Number five is Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast at Six Flags St. Louis. Now, let me just say, Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast, the St. Louis clone, and the Over Texas clone don't get any attention at all, or little to none, because these coasters aren't really known for being too big, but these coasters are actually very fun coasters, and I love Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast. The top hat is very fun. I really like the inverted top hat. The overbank turn is fun, plus the plus the vertical spike is very fun. This is just one of those fun coasters that the launch is so fun. I really like the aspect of going backwards one for one of the parts of the ride, and then the second half of the ride, you go forwards. But let's move on to number four, which is Gemini at Cedar Point. What an underrated coaster. I love Gemini. It's a very fun coaster, especially when you're racing the other side. This is definitely my favorite racing coaster I've ridden. It's definitely better than American Eagle because that ride doesn't deliver any airtime. Plus, you aren't even racing the other side sometimes. But Gemini, to me, is the true gem of racing coasters. Plus, it's a, the original hybrid, in my opinion. I really like this hybrid coaster. It's a great racing coaster, and most people could consider this a wooden coaster but it's actually a steel hybrid. I really like riding both sides of this coaster. And overall, Gemini, what a fun coaster. Number three is Screaming Eagle at Six Flags St. Louis. I really like Screaming Eagle. Great airtime machine. Overall, very fun coaster. And I just really like the airtime on this ride. I recommend you ride it at Six Flags St. Louis. Plus, no one even talks about Six Flags St. Louis, and not too many people talk about Screaming Eagle. But if you ride it, you will really enjoy it a lot, because it's a very smooth wooden coaster, and the airtime really delivers nicely. Number two is Shivering Timbers at Michigan's Adventure. Oh my goodness, this coaster is amazing. The airtime is super good. I really like the massive floater airtime hills in the first half of the ride, but second half also has some decent airtime, but that first half is what this ride is all about. That airtime on this ride is just relentless. I really like Shivering Timbers, and I really recommend you ride this coaster eventually, but I really, like seriously, this coaster, no one even pays attention to Michigan's Adventure at all and says, Oh, they don't really have a good coaster collection. Shivering Timbers is getting kind of rough. But no, this coaster is still bearable, guys. Shivering Timbers is a bearable wooden coaster that is super fun and has some amazing airtime. And number one is American Thunder at Six Flags St. Louis. I think Six Flags St. Louis is the most underrated Six Flags park besides Six Flags over Georgia because... American Thunder is one of the, to me, it's one of the best GCIs because it's super intense, has some amazing ejector airtime, and it feels like a steel coaster when it comes to smoothness. It feels like a glossy smooth steel coaster even though it's a wooden coaster. The drop is intense. I really like this coaster in the back row, which is the seat I got to ride this coaster on instead of the front row. But overall, what a fun coaster. Definitely ride this when you're at Six Flags St. Louis, and this is definitely the best coaster at Six Flags St. Louis, and the most underrated coaster I've ridden. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos.